This is a model, Robert, who has come in to sit for us for a test makeup. We always do test makeups for aliens because you never know what can happen. And this one will be airbrushed, but I like to do it by hand first because this particular alien is um, has to look be the mirror image of our actress Trance Gemini, played by Laura Bertram. And she's all hand painted. We used to airbrush her, but so I like I'm simulating the look by hand and then we're going to airbrush it to expedite time. So her his makeup is he's the moon and she's the sun, so and his is uh, the opposite. I've sort of designed it to be the opposite of her. And uh, it's sort of based on a Native American moon, loosely. <laughs> um, and we're using water-based makeup, so that's what we use on Laura. And that's what we'll be using on the actor when he comes in. And then he also has prosthetic ears. These aren't his prosthetic ears, but he'll have his own ears, which will be done much better than they are today, because all moons have ears. So did you design the makeup? I did. Yeah, we had a concept meeting with Bob Engels, and Bob and I, I drew up, um, I always do my makeups on heads, so I, after we had a little meeting, I drew up two different looks on a head. I did one sun and one moon. When you do an alien, you have to think of it, him like he has a pattern on his whole body, so we do, we're figuring out his pattern um, for his, from his hands, chest, and we don't do, we're not doing his arms, but we'll paint up his arms up to his elbows. So it's usually the alien is three or four hours in the making, but poor Robert's been here since nine o'clock this morning. <laughs> Um, so it sounds like the concept is that what we are seeing is the, the alien's skin, not an alien who is wearing makeup. That's right, and that's what we really try to strive for, that, you know, it really gives that impression. I mean, he is a humanoid, but that it looks like it. So I hope that's what it, in, in the end it will look like. And then I'll blend it with a, a brush, and then we put spar we'll put, put sparkles on him. Two, two layers of sparkles because that it sort of mutes the makeup down and makes it look like it's blended into the skin more. And um, then um, because the sun is sparkly, so the moon will be sparkly too. Kind of in general, where do you get your inspiration? Do you collect? Um, we collect, yeah, we collect, you know, you buy books and um, sometimes the you know, uh, someone will be inspired, an episode will be based loosely on a, a movie or someone will say, oh my god, did you see this old movie? And so you'll watch it and you can get ideas from that, but you never want to copy something, you want to have your own ideas, so the, my best ones come to me in the middle of the night when I'm sleeping. <laughs> and uh, that's a good place to get them from. Um, I think, just um, from books and looking at pictures of, for aliens, a lot of things, um, birds and fish are good inspirations. And um, what else? So do you do a sketch on paper or do you always yeah, use I, the architecture of a, of a... No, I sketch it out. I think about it in my head, then I put it on paper, and then I put it onto the head. And that, and that seems to work pretty well. We always try to get a photo of the actor. If we can't get a photo, then we'll watch their audition tape and, um, you know, really see what they look like. And of course, you have to adapt it to their sideburns, like this makeup, for example. Usually, you would shave their sideburns off so that um, it doesn't go th right through it. And, you know, on a head, those are kind of things you forget about. So we'll have to see if we can get the actor to shave them off. If not, we'll just 
go around it. But if you were doing a prosthetic makeup, you would definitely try not to have any sideburns there. But with a painted makeup, you can get away with it more, although I would really not like to have them. I just think it creates more authenticity, even though it's fake. <laughs> Now, is there a very clearly defined territory between hair and makeup? On no, um, on this show, Linda and I collaborate all the time. We always have, um, we always talk about what, you know, we, we'll each come up with an idea, but if it doesn't work for the other person, you know, we each both try to work together to make that makeup work for the other person. and. I think we work quite well together. It's a good collaboration between the two of us. So we've been really fortunate that way. Um, and and also you have to work. You usually if it if it's the script calls for example a blue alien, then I know I can pretty much design a blue alien. But if the script doesn't call for a specific color, I will go and find out what the, you know, producer wants and then what the costume is and we'll try to design around that because the costume is a big consideration for a character. But usually you get your, you know, the, the producer will say I want him to resemble a fish or something like that and then so that you have somewhere to go or you may have your own vision and and get convince the producer to do what you want <laughs> with their input also you know so it is really a collaborative thing and the production designer too has a big say in what goes into things and usually if you do a good job they'll like it but they we all have thoughts so it's good to be open-minded and never be too married to your idea. Makeup seems like a, it's a very intimate kind of it is. part of this production the, process. I guess, you, do you get to know the cast members pretty well? Yes, um, we Laura knows us pretty well, <laughs> our trans alien. Um, she, we have three of us that do her makeup at the same time. So um, we spend two and a half hours with her in the morning and it's it's I think it's a pretty good relationship it's fun because we talk about everything so um, yeah I think I think you do definitely even with regular makeup you do because you work so you're right in some working in someone's close proximity to someone what characteristics does someone need to have to be a good makeup artist well, creative for one thing, I think that's obvious, but um, they have to be a person who works well with other people. You know, you can't be very strong-headed about your own opinions because you do have to learn to collaborate, otherwise you'll never get ahead. And um, have a good, even personality and be able to work with not a lot of sleep. <laughs>